What's going on everybody? David here. Today we're going to talk about the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Uh, but first off, if you guys are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you can get future updates on my videos. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to start doing live streams. So we'll start doing live streams of just going over these different credit cards. And uh, now I will tell you I'm no expert. So uh, if you are not comfortable with credit cards and and stuff like that, then this is not going to be the uh, stream that you're going to want to watch. Uh, so uh, I'm not here to try to teach you how to manage your money and all that stuff. Uh, my main focus here is to get you guys out traveling. And I just found that in the in the past, it was easier for me to um, use travel reward credit cards to to travel. And very it's very affordable. So I was able to get a few cards. And for the last two years, I've been traveling uh, all over every at least every three months I travel outside of the country and that's new for me because uh, the first time I left the country was eight years ago and so I was almost 40 years old so I'm 40 I'll be 47 in a couple of days so it took me a long time to get to that point where I started traveling and so once I did start traveling then I just realized that this is something that I really enjoy doing and so that's why I'm sharing this stuff with you. So like I said, I'm not a professional. Um, if there's anybody in the in the chat room right now, just let me know if you can hear me and everything. I've been working on my audio. So I just want to make sure that that's working. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So what we'll do about what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Chase Sapphire Preferred today. And so Clifton, how you doing? Uh, let me know if you can hear me, Clifton, just so I know uh, everything is going going right. OK, audio is fine. All right. So um, we're just going to talk about the card. And like I said, I'm not a professional when it comes to travel award credit cards. There are a variety of really good sites out there. The Points Guy is probably one of the most uh, well-known. And Boarding Area is an, another good place to go where they have all these different blogs that you can look at and, and see some uh, good, good reviews and stuff on credit cards and travel award credit cards and all that. So... Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. And like I said, we're just going to talk about some of the different, some of the different credit cards that are, are we're going to talk about the Chase Sapphire Preferred today, but in the future, I'll come on and we'll talk about some of the different credit cards that are out there. And I'd love for you guys to uh, let me know what you guys think, because like I said, I'm not an expert, so we can help each other out. There are a variety of different things that this card offers that I don't even use. So uh, for the most part, uh, this was the second card that I got. Uh, and I, I just started doing travel awards credit cards like two years ago. So or we'll say three it was yeah, it was about three. Eh, yeah, three years ago. We'll say three years ago. Uh, I got I started getting cards first. I didn't start really traveling and it took me probably about six months until I started actually traveling with the with travel awards credit cards. But what I did is I got a couple of cards. The first card that I got was the city, uh, the city premier card. I think it was a premier. Yeah, it was a premier card. So I got that card and I got the thank you points and I didn't know what I was doing at that point. So uh, that's probably not a card that's high on your list. You should probably get this card first. Chase Sapphire Preferred is probably one of the the better better known, easier to transfer to different transfer partners, and it just works a lot better. Uh, so I got that City Premier card first, and then I got an Advantage card, so the American Airlines Advantage card, which I still have. I actually still have both both these cards. I need to get rid of. I need to get rid of the Chase Sapphire Preferred only because I need to downgrade it because I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve. That's a whole nother topic, but. Uh, they overlap each other, and that actually the Chase Sapphire Reserve is a higher end card and it gives you better value. So it's worth it to downgrade the Chase Sapphire Preferred if you still have it to like a Chase Freedom or a Chase Freedom Unlimited. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the card and let's see. Um, let's see. Let me flip this over. Still getting used to this whole chat room stuff. So. Uh, periodically I'll go over and see what's in the chat and then we'll talk a little bit about that and then I'll come back uh, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the card. So the first thing when it comes to this card, Chase Sapphire Preferred, you get a 50,000 uh, point bonus. That's after spending, what do you need to spend? $4,000 within the first three months. Now, 
I will tell you guys, uh, just from experience, if you can't hit that minimum spin, so if you can't spend four thousand dollars within the first uh, three months, then don't get the card. Because if you can't get that fifty thousand points, it's not worth it to get to get the card. Let me plug my computer in because it looks like it's going out. All right, all right. Just wanted to plug it in because I don't want it to go out on me. Okay, so, yes, if you can't spend the money, if you can't spend that $4,000, don't get the card. And what I tell a lot of people um, that ask me, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not an expert, but I do have friends that will, they see that I'm traveling all the time. Like every three months, I'm going out of the country, going somewhere. And people know that traveling is expensive. So if you can do it for pennies like if you can spend three hundred dollars and go to thailand uh for airfares uh, pay three hundred dollars people they they hit you up and they ask you about things so uh, i have i've had a variety of people ask me well how do you spend that four thousand what's your like what's your game plan so when it comes to me my game plan is this if i have something big that i need to purchase let's say it's an appliance or uh, just something that I, I, something big I need to purchase. I need to pay off my taxes or what, what have you. I will consider getting the card at that point. So I'll, I'll kind of set it up. So if there's something that I need to buy, then I'll get the card. If there's something that a family member needs to purchase and they'll give me cash for it, then I'll go ahead and, and get the card and, and pay it off. So for me, $4,000 is kind of in a three month period. It's pretty easy for me to spend. And if you have a family, it's it's generally pretty easy if you really think about all the things that you spend, uh, all the things that you spend money on. Uh, what I do is I change my whole my whole habit. So I don't use a debit card now. I don't use a debit card ever. And any time where I would use a debit card, I'm using I'm using the credit card. And that's just been my game plan. Every two weeks, I pay the card off. So I never carry a balance on that card. I never. Uh, pay interest on that card because if you start if you start paying interest on those on these credit cards, first it's it's horrible when you start paying interest because now you're just giving giving these banks money, and all these points that you're earning you're just devaluing the points every time you have to pay interest. So if you're not comfortable with credit cards, this is not something that that's that you should look into because uh, it it can it can catch you real quick. Um, another thing too is if you if you don't have the money in the bank, don't don't use the credit card. And so what I'm saying, like if it's an appliance or if it's something I need to purchase, I'm going to have the money in the bank already. All I'm doing is using the credit card to make the purchase. And then as soon as that posts that that whatever, let's say it's a two thousand dollar for my appliances. As soon as that shows up on on my account, on my credit card account, I'm paying it off. So I already have the money. It's not. Uh, I, I think and this is the way that I was taught when I was younger, and I don't know where this real com really comes from. I guess it came from my family, but if you have a credit card, it's like an emergency. So if you don't have money, you use the credit card. But that's not the way to think about it. You need to think about it along these lines. You're using that credit card to get the benefits from the credit card, and then you're paying it off so you're never allowing the bank to, to get interest to, to make money on you. So you're trying to make money on the bank and not letting the bank make money on you. So that's pretty much the way I look at it. So uh, 50,000 bonus points is great. 50,000 bonus points for the most part, that's two round trip tickets anywhere from anywhere, pretty much anywhere within the U.S. Uh, I think it excludes like Hawaii. You'll pay a little bit more. Uh, but let's say I'm going from Los Angeles to New York. Generally, I can get a flight for about 25,000 points uh, economy. Um, 25,000, 30,000 points, but you have to look around, you have to shop around. You do have to do a little extra legwork. And what I do is I transfer my points to the transfer partners. I very rarely will use the portal on, on chase. And the reason that I like to transfer the transfer partners. So let's say I've, I've transferred my points to United. I can transfer them to United. I can see what they had, what United has, and then I can, I can book my, my flight. I like doing it better that way. Uh, the easier way is to just use their portal, uh, Chase, the Ultimate Rewards portal. You can go on there. You can book flights on all these different airlines. But the value is not the same. You get so much more value if you transfer your points to the transfer partners. 
So that's, that's just the way that I do it. And you can really work out some good deals. I just went to Thailand uh, three, going on three months, three months ago. And I flew up, I flew up there on United. I flew back on, um, on another airline, but flying up there, I flew business class and I spent, I want to say it was 75, yeah, 75,000 uh, points. And it, that sounds like a lot and it is a lot, but just think here, you have 50,000 points on just this card. Let's say you had another card, you get another 50,000 bonus points right there. And you have over that 75,000. So 75,000 uh, to fly business class to Thailand is, is it's definitely worth it. I mean, we're talking that whole flight and the flight, all three flights together with layovers and everything, it was 24 hours. So you can just think the long haul flight was, I think it was about 12 hours and then I had another six hour flight and then I had another like two hour flight or something. So you have, it's worth it to fly business class that, that way because you can sleep and all that good stuff. Okay, let me look at the chat real quick because let's see what's going on over here. And let's see. Okay, if you guys hear me, that's good. Gonna apply, they will respond. <laughs> well, Clifton, you gotta, I mean, you do need to have good credit and they're looking at, I think it's like 700 to 720 is kind of where you need to be uh, in order to, to get, to get one of these cards. And it's, it's all case by case. So I, I'm not promising you anything, but I know I've heard around 700, 720 is kind of where you need to be. I think they even say, if you look in the fine print, they, I think they do say like where, where you should be uh, to apply for the card. But uh, yeah, you do need to work on your credit and, and have, have some pretty decent credit in order to get these cards. But if you can get them, I'm telling you, you can really benefit. And if you can't get them and you need to work your credit up, and get your credit uh, credit score higher, then get some of the lower end cards, maybe the Chase Freedom card, maybe you're, you can qualify for that one. And get that card first and start working on that card and then see if you can upgrade. You can also have a bank account with Chase. I think they don't say this, but I think there's kind of a, they'll kind of work with you a little more. And if you do have, if you do have a Chase uh, bank account, you'll probably get the flyers that will come in with all these different credit cards. So you can look into that as well. Let's see. So Shalom totally agree with the bonus. Way too much value you'd miss out on if you can't hit the minimum spend. Yeah. Shalom. Yeah. So you, I can't say enough. If you can't hit that minimum spend and get that bonus, you can't get the 50,000 bonus points. You're really, you're wasting your time. You, you really are. You want to get that 50,000 bonus points. And then in the future, you're still using the card. If you want to do it for long term, uh, then you can still keep the card long term. And then we'll, we'll look at some of the different earn possibilities, but you definitely want to get that 50,000 points off the bat. Okay. I applied on December. So who writing? I applied on December 15th, got the application is being reviewed. We'll get something in writing in approximately two weeks. Okay, so who riding? I would, this is just my advice and I've done it a couple of times with Chase. So uh, I do have a business. So I got a couple of business cards and each time I get the Chase Inc. card, I got the Chase Inc. Plus and the Inc. Business Plus and then the Inc. Uh, Inc. Unlimited. Inc. Business Plus, I don't even think they, they don't even offer that card anymore. But on both occasions, they put me in kind of like that review status. And so what I did, and this happened both times, because they needed more information is basically what the reason why they put me in review, but I didn't know. And so they told me that they would send me something in writing within 30 days or whatever. So I got online and you can um, look up and I don't have the... It's like a reconsideration number. And if you look it up, if someone looks it up uh, for me while, while I'm talking then uh, and put it out there, that'd be great. But if you call that reconsideration line and just let them know, I had just applied for the card. I was just wondering, is there any more information that you needed from me? And then they'll pull it up and they'll look at it. And uh, sometimes they can tell you right away, oh, yeah, you know what? They'll ask you a few questions or... Uh, what have you, or they, they might even tell you, okay, well, this is where you're weak and this is, this is what we're, we're looking for something like that. 
So you can always call that line. I wouldn't wait for them to, to respond to you. I would actually reach out to them first. And you're not, all you're saying is, I'm just wondering if there's anything else that you can, that, that you need from me. And, and then just go from there. The first time, like I said, I've, I've done it twice. So I've had two, um, two business cards. And the thing with the whole business thing, I don't have, I have a sole, I'm a sole proprietor. So I don't have like a corporation or anything like that. So I'm just using my social security number. I think that automatically just kicks you into uh, review status. And so when I call them, the first time when I call them, the, the lady asked me a few questions and just about how much income I make and all that and what, what the business exactly is. It's a photography business, so it's kind of self-explanatory, but she just wanted a little more information and then she approved me. And the second time that I called, it was, it was even weirder because I just called, told them, asked them, if, is there any other information that you need? I just applied for the card. And this was same day. This was probably 15 minutes after I applied for the card. And I already had that number because I had it from the from the previous uh, previous uh, card that I got. And so the guy said, oh, let me look at it. And so he's looking and he says, just give me one minute. So he went away and then he came back, didn't ask me any questions or anything like that. Just said, OK, sir, you're, you're going to be approved for however. I can't even remember the amount, but you'll be approved for this amount. And we'll be sending out the card uh, in 10 business days or something like that. So it was that easy. Like it was just a matter of me calling and him pulling it up and I, I don't know, maybe talking to his manager or whoever and then coming back and saying, okay, you've been approved. So they didn't even need any more information from me. It was just one of those situations where it was probably automatically just because I put my social security. And I'm, this is what I'm thinking now. I don't know what exactly what they're looking at, but I'm thinking I put my social security number down uh, as a business. They just needed to verify whatever, whatever. So my advice um, uh, to who riding, just give them a call. It's not going to hurt. And if you don't get the answer that you're looking for, you can always hang up, wait another couple of days and call back and see if, if, uh, if there's a change. So you can do that as well. So let's see. Uh, I know it's just joking around. I've been okay. So, okay, Cliff, Clifton says he knows he's just joking around. Okay, yeah, you, you, you all, we should all be in that place where we're thinking, okay, if we're going to start applying for credit cards, you want to have your, your credit at least uh, at least decent credit. You don't want to have anything that's bad credit and, and start applying because what will happen, and, and I didn't even go into this, but when you apply for a credit card uh, and they approve you, they're going to they, – you're going to get a ding in your credit. So usually – for me, it's been about, and it, it varies for different people. I don't know why, but for me, it's been about six points, six to eight points. So you'll take that, you'll hit, take a ding uh, once you get approved for the card and they're, they send the card. So you'll take a little ding. And I have like a credit tracker, so it will track my credit. So I know if I take a ding, it's going to show me and I'll, I can see exactly uh, that I had um, uh, an entry or, or what have you where they look at your, your credit. So it drops my credit down about six points. It lasts for about two to three months, and then it'll go back up. So that's that's the way that works, um, and it does happen pretty much every time. I, I can't think of a time where I've applied for a credit card and you get accepted, and then a couple, usually it's like two, three weeks later, I see that drop in my credit. So just be just watch your credit. Like I watch my credit so I know exactly what's going on. It doesn't bother me because I know it's going to go back up, but uh, you will take a take a little ding. Uh, let's see, uh, who riding? I've been contacting Chase to see if they needed to verify any info after doing research. I assume you're calling your consideration line was a negative thing as opposed to letting the process play out. Okay. All right. So basically, uh, who riding saying that it, from what he's heard, it's been a, a negative kind of a negative thing to do the, the reconsideration. I'm just telling you what works for me. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I've done it twice and it worked for me both times. So uh, other people might have different experiences. I don't know, maybe it was because it's a business. Uh, it was a, a business credit cards that I was getting and there was a little bit different uh, situation. It's not a personal card like this is, but uh, that's just been my experience. And that's all I can, that's all I can speak on. Let's see. In the rebuilding stage, but was able to get my goal card. Okay, that's good. So you got the new gold card then, I would I would imagine. 
see in the high 600s. Okay. Now, like I said, I'm just going to speak on my experiences and I would do a lot of research when it, when I get into anything and getting into these travel award credit cards before I got my first card, I did a bunch of research and I wanted to find out like, what is it? What are these points all about? And it's funny because my uncle, uh, he's been doing this whole point travel reward points, frequent flyer miles, all that he's been doing it forever. And, uh, he had a, a good job where he was traveling all over and he would book his own hotel, book his own airfare. So he's using his credit card. Then he gets reimbursed by the company. So he was able to really accrue a lot of points. And I knew he was doing it. My family, we all knew he was doing it, but we didn't really, we didn't really know what points meant and all that. But he was able to just, he would go on business trips and then he was able to do his own little travel because he had all these points that he accrued. So he was able to go all, to all these different places. So it, it, it does, it is a benefit. It definitely is a benefit. So it's, it's one of those deals where you, you, you need to do the research. I got in there, I started doing the research and then I got my first card and I got the wrong card. I didn't, my, obviously my research wasn't that good because, um, I got the, the city. Well, let, let me, let me back up. The research that I was doing was on the top cards and then I saw that the city, the city card had the this new thank you points and all that. So they were new in the market. You you had Chase already, and then City kind of they changed their, they revamped their cards and they had these thank you points. And so I was like, oh, this is new. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out and get this. So that's why I got the card, and uh, it was still a good card. I, the the card's a good card, but just the, the airline partners they didn't have really any American. Uh, like they had, they didn't have American. They didn't have, well, American, you can, you can see, th and this is stuff that I'm learning now, but there, there are ways to get, uh, to use American airlines. You can go through British airways and there are different ways to, to work it, which at the time I didn't know. So all I was looking at face value. Okay. They have Virgin America and that's all they had Virgin America. And then they had all these other foreign carriers, but I didn't understand about, uh, airline partners and all this other kind of stuff. So, uh, just because they don't, just because United is not one of their partners doesn't mean you can't fly on United by using one of the uh, United's airline partners. So I know it gets a little confusing, but when I first got uh, the first card I got was that card. And then the, the second card I got was the, the airline card because I wanted to have, I, I, I wanted to make a commitment to fly on one airline. So I was going to make a commitment to fly on American airlines. And that's why I got that card. And I wanted the free bags and all that good stuff. But then I kind of changed my mind. Now I like flying United more than I like flying American. So it's it's time to get rid of that card and, and get a United card. Okay, let's see. Let's see. All right, let's go back into what we were discussing here with this card. So we talked about 50,000 bonus points. If you can't afford it, if you can't afford that to hit that minimum spend, then then don't <laughs> don't get the card. It's a $95 annual fee, but that's waived the first year. So that's great. So it gives you a, a full year to kind of look at the card and figure out, hey, is this what I want? Is this card working for me? Uh, I was able to get my parents to get one of these travel cards and they, sh they got this one and they did it. They used it for a year. They got the points. Uh, they still have the card. It's been it's been two years now. So they still have the card. So they, they still pay uh, the, the annual fee on the card. But as long as, as long as you're earning, and the way I look at it, as long as I'm earning points that will supplement this $95 annual fee, if I earn enough points and it's valuable to me, if this card is still valuable to me, then I'll still use, I'll still keep the card because I'm still getting that 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 $95 value on it. So that's that's my main focus. So let's look down here and look at some of the uh, look at the redemptions here. Like I said, me personally. I'm not going, this is the travel portal that they're showing here, $625 value, hotel, $625 value, and then cash, uh, $500 value. One thing I would highly recommend, never, never cash out, never do the cash value because you're really not, you're not getting, you're not getting the value that you can get out of this card. And just to, like I, like I gave you the example, you can fly two round trip tickets uh, anywhere, pretty much anywhere in the U S excluding Hawaii, uh, with 
twenty with uh, fifty thousand points, two round trip tickets. So you, it would be hard for you to get two round trip tickets for five hundred dollars uh, if you had, let's say, you cashed out and you booked it that way, or however. Let's just say you had five hundred dollars value, you cash out, you see the five hundred dollars value. It's going to be hard to get two round trip tickets uh, to New York from Los Angeles or something like that with uh, five hundred dollars. It's just it's just going to be a hard deal. Now, uh, even the the hotel stay six hundred twenty five dollars. Uh, I recommend transferring your points. Uh, I, I I stay at Hyatt's all the time. Uh, that's kind of the, the my go to hotel. Uh, and six hundred twenty five dollar value, I can get more value. Fifty thousand points will get me more value than than this. And I can stay I can stay in some pretty nice place. I mean, you, the Hyatt properties, Hyatt Regency, some of the the higher end uh, Hyatt properties, twenty thousand. Uh, points is what you need for one night and that's the high end so that those are the high categories now those high categories those rooms four hundred dollars some over five hundred dollars if you're staying in hawaii some of those rooms are just ridiculously expensive so you're going to get way more than 625 dollars you'll probably get double that if you really work it right so that's just the way that that I look at that. So if I'm transferring to the transfer partners and not using the portal, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have more value, and then I can stretch it too. So uh, let's say I want to stay six nights at a category one hotel, and or six or seven nights, whatever, at a category one hotel. Category one hotel is, I believe it's like uh, talking Hyatt. It's it's like five thousand points. Uh, 5,000 or 8,000, something like that. I can't even remember, but I can get that value. So I have 50,000 points. I can easily stay there. I can stay there. Let's say it's 5,000 points. I can stay there 10, um, 10 nights with that 50,000 points. And that value is going to be way over because you have to understand it's going to be at least a hundred dollars a night. Uh, even it's, even if it's a category one category ones, generally the Hyatt place, and I'm speaking about Hyatt mainly, but I'm just giving you kind of an example. But and that's what I know. Like I, I stay at Hyatt, so I kind of know what they're they're set up. Category one is like a Hyatt place, and Hyatt places, is, it's a decent it's a decent room. It's I have not I've never stayed at a Hyatt where I thought it was uh, either in a real bad neighborhood or just a really tacky, not a nice place to be. I've never stayed at Hyatt. I've stayed at Hyatt's all over the world, really. Um, they're always nice and they're always generally built the same. So even the rooms, like I stayed, I've stayed at plenty of uh, Hyatt places out in California. And then I went to Costa Rica and I stayed at Hyatt place in Costa Rica, almost the exact same layout. I mean, you go in the room and the, 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 the whole room is set up exactly the same. Uh, and Hyatt places are generally kind of, they have the same setup where they have like a couch on one side then they have like a little divider and then they have the, the um, bed, the bed, and then they have the bathroom off to the side. It was all to a T. It was almost exactly the same. Even when you go down the way the design was where they have the little rest or the little uh, breakfast nook area where you eat and all this stuff. It was, I mean, it was, it was pretty, it, it's comforting. I don't know. Like when I go to places, I like to know what I'm getting into and not have to do a whole bunch of research on these different hotels and stuff like that. So that's just my spill on that. But anyway, you can get more value than if you transfer your points, you get more value than redeeming them at the uh, ultimate rewards program. OK, so let's look at the earn possibility, because this is really important. Uh, this is one of those things. I am not a person that churns cards. And when I say churns cards, there's a lot of people out there that will get a card or they'll get two or three cards at once. They'll hit the min minimum spend on all those cards. They'll get all these points and then couple months later six months later they get rid of the cards and then they when I say get rid of they they cancel the cards and then get some new cards get all the points and then they just keep doing that so they keep churning these cards over and over I'm not that's that's not my style I'm more conservative when it comes to to uh, credit cards and I want to look for cards that long term that that I can keep for long term and the, what I'm the main thing that I'm looking for is what's the earn possibility how many points can I earn uh, on travel. So in this card, you can earn two points for every dollar spent on travel. You can earn two points for every dollar spent dining, uh, and then one point for every dollar spent on everything else. 
So in the dining category, now I'm just saying if I don't have, right now, I, uh, personally, I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So it beats all these categories. So realistically, I just have that. The Chase Sapphire Preferred that I have right now is just sitting, it's just sitting in my drawer. I don't use it. And that's the reason why I need to downgrade it so I can get it to a card where I can actually use it because I'm, I'm actually wasting, uh, I, I can be earning more points by getting a Chase Freedom. If I have a Chase Freedom card, um, I can earn more points. Or even if I had the Chase Freedom Unlimited, I get 1.5 across the board. So if I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, that that category, because Chase Sapphire Reserve also has the, the one point for everything else. Uh, so in that category, I can get 1.5 instead of just getting one point. So uh, that's just my take on that. Now, you want to get a card where you can earn. So if I travel a lot, this is a great card for me. If I'm using taxis, if I'm using trains, staying at hotels, paying for airfare, I'm going to get two points for every dollar spent. And so that's that's where you want to be, right? So you want to you want to get a card where you can really get a lot of value out of it. And then dining. I eat out a lot, so this works. Two times points. And and like I said, Understand that now I use the Chase Sapphire Reserve for these categories. But if I didn't have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, then this is what I'd be talking about. And this is what I did prior to getting the Chase Sapphire Reserve because I had this card first. So uh, dining, I'm going to use this card. Two points for every dollar spent. So in a long, like looking long term, this card is worth it because you can, you, if you're using the card all the time, you, you'll be able to uh, keep, you know, you'll be able to keep that, you'll be able to get over that $95 annual fee every year as long as you get more than that value then it's worth it to keep the card and you pay your card on time uh, before before you don't want to carry any interest on it so you want to pay it pay it up in full so that's that's the the number one thing if you can't do that don't don't get the card okay so let's look at chat real quick and if you guys have uh like things that you do then then please post it in the, in the chat so we can we can discuss that as well. Uh, there are a lot of different people who have different techniques, and this just works for me. And it's worked for me for the last two years, and that's the only reason that I'm out here sharing it with you guys. Uh, but there are a lot of people that use different cards and use different techniques. So I'd love to hear about uh, the techniques that you guys use. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, 7Z, he said, if you don't fly at all, then you redeem for cash. Yeah, I, I wouldn't get the card if I didn't, if I didn't fly. If I didn't, if I didn't travel, I wouldn't get the card. That's just me. Um, because there are other cashback cards out there that you can get if you, if you really want to do that. You can get some cashback cards where there's, there's no, no annual fee at all. So uh, that, that's kind of, if you want to go that route, and you just want to get the cash back, which some people do. Uh, they don't want to. They don't want to fuss with all the trying to transfer the different transfer partners, and then knowing, okay, if I transfer to this transfer partner, then I can fly on this airline, and I can hit this sweet spot here, and all that. Uh, s not everyone wants to deal with all that, so I get it. But if I had the Chase Sapphire Preferred, I probably wouldn't do a cash back. I, I just would. It just it would hurt me to do that. Uh, I would find a way, even if it's, uh, even if I'm staying local you know, at a hotel, I have to go to stay at a hotel for whatever reason. I would, I would use it there. Um, I, I wouldn't do the five hundred dollar cash back. It's just, ooh, that it just hurts me thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, to each his own, but I'm just saying, mm, get a cash back card. Get one of those no annual fee cash back cards, and you'll be, you'll be all set. Oh, he got. Let's see. Looking for with the new gold card. Okay, so who Ryden's asking? How does this card even compare to the new gold card? It doesn't. Um, the 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 American Express Gold is what he's talking about. That card is is far superior. It does have a higher annual fee too, so you have to take that in consideration. Uh, the only benefit that Chase Sapphire uh, Preferred has right now over uh, that card is the 
uh, you get points overseas. So I get two times points in dining if I'm if I'm flying if I'm in a different country. Whereas the American Express Gold doesn't allow you to do that. So it's U.S. only for their redemptions, uh, which is fine. Um, or with uh, not their redemption, but they're earned. So if you're earning, you get four times points, but it's only going to be within the U.S. for dining and stuff like that. So, um, w which, and I, I talked about this in some other videos. Uh, I've done a, a few videos on American Express Gold, and I really like that card. I don't have that card. Uh, I haven't jumped into the American Express ecosystem, and I kind of, I'm tied into the Chase Sapphire or Chase Sapphire, the Chase Ultimate Rewards programs and, and using the, the Chase cards right now. So that's my ecosystem. Eventually, I will probably get some American Express cards and I might just switch over. Not, I shouldn't say switch over. I might um, move into American Express, keep the Chase cards that I have, the ones that I, that I, that I want to keep for long term, and then add to my my cards and get American Express Platinum and American Express Gold. So those are the two cards that I'm, that I'm looking at, but I haven't gotten them yet. Uh, but I do know that's definitely, American Express Gold is definitely a better card than the, the Chase Sapphire Preferred. That's my opinion. Uh, now, if you are in a, if you have problems paying annual fees and you're thinking $95 is a lot, well, the annual fee is, what, $250 for the American Express Gold. So you, you have to take that in consideration too, so. And plus the bonus, if you can't, there are a lot of different uh, promotions that they're doing where you can get 50,000 point uh, bonus. But I think the standard bonus is like 25,000. So uh, it's a little less than this card. So let's look. Let's see what else is in the chat. Um, Mika, baby, if you apply for the United card, apply with the flight offer, it's 50,000 sign up bonus. Okay, so she's saying if you apply, so when you say the flight offer, Nikki, uh, Nika, are you talking about the one that they offer when you actually fly, or are you talking about online? Let's see. I think this is united.com and the flight offer. Okay. All right. So it looks like you're, you can just go here to united.com and the flight offer. Okay. And United is good. Um, I like flying United. I do uh, when it comes to... If you want to compare American American Airlines, United, and Delta, I personally like flying United. And I just, I, I've had some bad experiences flying American Airlines. I don't know what it is. Uh, when I flew to, uh, two years ago, I flew to Paris. And I had the, wor <laughs> the worst experience flying on American Airlines. And I don't know what was going on, but... Um, and I'll just talk about this story real, really quick. And if you guys have stories too, please post in the chat because I just want to know, is it just me or is American, Ex American airlines, uh, is there something going on? So, uh, I was flying to Paris and what I did is I wanted, I actually stayed at a hotel right by the airport. So I stayed at a Hyatt right by the airport the night before. And I liked actually doing that. I, even though, I mean, I could have just driven out to, to Los Angeles airport to LAX. I wanted to stay in a hotel. So I went and stayed there at the Hyatt and it made things a lot smoother because I had, all I needed to do was they had a shuttle. that was going to take me to the airport. And I'm right there. Like I could see that I'm almost on the, on the, um, the tarmac, like right there. I can see the airplanes coming in coming out and all that. So I was able to just get in the shuttle, get to the airport. No problems. But, uh, the night, that same night, I get an email, not a text, not a phone call. I get an email saying that my flight has been canceled and my flight and the flight was in uh, San Francisco. So my first flight was going to go to San Francisco, which is the, the hub. And then it was going to go from uh, from San Francisco out to I think it went straight out, went straight to Paris. So I get an email. And I happened to look at my email. I'm telling you, I very rarely ever look at my email anyway, but I happened to look at my email. When I looked at my email, uh, I saw that my flight was canceled. And there was, and basically it said, your flight was, your flight has been canceled. Uh, and they were telling me to wait and they were going to re, rebook me or whatever. Give me another flight. So my flight was at like six in the morning. So I didn't want to wait 
and like wake up in the morning and then realize that I missed a flight that they rebooked me on that I didn't know was either earlier or what have you. So I called and I called them, told them that, oh, they started looking around and they were just struggling to find me a flight. So finally they did. They were able to get me a flight uh, and it set me back a little bit. But anyway, so I went, got on that, got on the plane uh, in Los Angeles, went over to San Francisco from San Francisco. I uh, went out to, to, uh, Paris. And so actually, no, let me back up. When I got to San Francisco, then that flight got delayed and they moved us from one terminal to another terminal. So we went from one terminal to another terminal. They were trying to fix the plane. There was something going on with the plane. They couldn't figure it out. So then they had to move us back to the same terminal that we came, that we initially went to. So we went back over there. Then they're still trying to figure things out. And so like four or five hours later, they had to scrap that plane. And then they had to wait for, and I think there was an issues with the, like, you know, the pilots and the pilots have to have a certain amount of time where they rest and all that. So they weren't able to fly like right away. So we had to wait. And I ended up, it, I want to say it was at least eight hours. And then we got another plane, a new plane. We got in that plane and then we took off. And that worked out because I was flying economy and it was like a 10 hour flight, but it was it was really late at that time. And the plane was, there were, it was a one of the big Dreamliner planes and there weren't very many people on the plane. So I had a whole road of myself. So that was all, that was good. But just dealing with all that was was a headache. So I had that ordeal. And then on the way back, I flew British Airways. Excellent. Well, I flew first class. So, okay, it was excellent. <laughs> first class is usually not going to be that bad, but it was exceptional. Got back to, and I flew into Nevada, uh, to Las Vegas. And then I had to fly to Las, from Las Vegas to uh, back to LAX. So that little hopper that I was flying was going to be back on American Airlines. So I flew from British Airways down there and then American Airlines for the little hopper. So I had to get my luggage when I got to Las Vegas and go through customs and all that. And I'm telling you, if you do not have global entry, you need to get it because global entry will save you so much time and you don't have to wait in lines. Oh, God, I just love it. Go to a kiosk and you punch in or actually you put your fingerprint down. It takes your fingerprint. You put your passport down. You answer like five or six questions on the computer. It spits out a, a picture because it takes a picture of you. So it spits out a picture of you with some information on it. You take that information to baggage claim with you and you go pick up your bag and then you just hand it to the customs guy and you just keep on walking. It's and if you bring if you just have a carry on, you don't even have to go to baggage claim. You just get that receipt and you go right to customs and usually you'll have your own little line. You go through there and you you hand it to them. And they half look at it. It's like, okay, have a good day. <laughs> it's, it's it, it, you know, you need it. If you don't have global entry, you need to get global entry. If you're traveling outside the country. Okay, so anyway, I go, I, I, I get my bags. I take it over to uh, American Airlines. Check my bag. Jump on the plane. Get to Los Angeles. And mind you, it's been a long flight. It's probably a 16, seven, 16, 17 hours with the layover and all that. And I get to LAX. It's late at night and my luggage is not there. <laughs> and I just, I was done. I was done after that. My American Express, best, uh, I, just, I was just done with them. So at that point, what I did is I went to, like if you, I'm standing there and, my, and everyone's got their luggage and there's no more luggage on the little, uh, turnstile thing. So I go over and tell him, Hey, I don't have my luggage. And the guy's asking me all these questions and all that. And he was like, Oh, and then he's looking, Oh, your luggage is still in Las Vegas. So they never put my luggage on the plane. And so I didn't get my luggage until the next day. It's like in the afternoon sometime, but I was already at home. So it was fine. Like all I need to do is never, never like pack anything that you like I always have all my stuff, my keys, all that stuff is always like on me or in my carry on. So I got home and it wasn't a problem. I have all my clothes and everything here. So it wasn't a big deal, but still just, yeah. And that wasn't the first time I did have another experience, the same situation where they lost my luggage, American airlines. And uh, I have a buddy, my buddy, and I know I'm going off on a tangent on American airlines, but it, I just, I have to get this out. 
<laughs> I have a buddy that's flown American Airlines uh, on two trips. Like last year, we went on two trips, or we went on like three or four trips together. But uh, on two trips, he flew American Airlines, and the experience was was very very similar. Where even we went to Thailand. We just went to Thailand, and his flight back. I want to say, let's see, his flight back got delayed. And I want to th- I want to say it was canceled. No, 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 it wasn't canceled. It got delayed, but it was like delayed like 16 hours or something. So he's stuck in China for like 16 hours. So he flew from Thailand to China to, to Beijing, and then he gets stuck in, in, in Beijing. So I don't know. And I flew on the way back. I flew Hanan Air. So I flew through uh, Alaska Airlines partner. But. Yeah, I don't know. And then he, and then we went to Columbia. So we went to Columbia in May. And he flew American Airlines and we we were both leaving the same day, but I left a little earlier. So uh we had a guide that was taking us pretty much everywhere. So he came and picked us up to take us to the airport. So he took me to the airport first and then my buddy didn't have a, his flight wasn't for several hours later. So I'm on the plane and actually was I I I already got home. I was already no. I, I'm sorry. I was in Florida, so I flew from uh, from Medellin to to Florida. So when I get to Florida, I'm checking my messages and everything, and I see that oh wow, his flight got uh, canceled, and so he had to stay an extra an extra day, which is I would have preferred to do that. Like I wanted to stay an extra day, but he had to stay an extra day, and then they had to put him on the flight in the morning. So he was he was just hurting. So all right, let's see. Um, let's see what we got in the chat here. Okay. Travel credit three. Okay. Chase trifecta. Let's see. What am I missing here? What are we talking about? Go card is good. If you can advantage it, $120 dining credit. You need, yeah. So yeah, he's seven. Seven's he's saying that uh, the 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 American Express Gold is a good card, but you have to be able to use those, like the dining credit. Uh, they also have, I think they have what an airline credit or something like that. So they do have some different credits, but if you can't use these credits, you're really not going to benefit from from the card. Let's see, who riding, but also get fifty thousand on the sign up bonus and a hundred dollar credit. Yeah, so, if, and another thing, if you do want to get that American Express Gold, look to see if, and there are so many people that have these different uh, um, promotional bonuses for the 50,000 uh, point sign up. So if you if you want to get American Express Gold, make sure you get the 50,000 points if you can. Okay. All right, I'm going to move through these rather quickly just because I want to get back to what you're talking about. Mika, baby, I'm applying for gold on the last day of the Rose Bowl edition. I don't even know when that last day is. Let's see. 7Z. Who do we want to choose preferred? The preferred cards are the choice preferred. Okay, so, but they haven't, you might want to wait. I don't know if City is relaunching. City's relaunching the, the Premier. But I don't. I didn't. I didn't hear anything about them relaunching the the preferred the city preferred card. Um, and I, I. I still. I still. Well, I shouldn't say because if they are relaunching the city preferred, then they'll probably offer some some new be- new benefits. But uh, I still would like to. Ch- I, I like to chase that fire preferred. And the main reason is I know they have already better cards that are established. So you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve that you can work with. You have the Chase Freedom cards that you can work with uh, that will allow you to get some points with those cards as well. So, you know, I, I like the Chase ecosystem. That's that's my thing. All right. Regular United offers 40000 In-flight is fifty. Yeah, so Nika Baby just talking about the United card. And the United card, I think, is a good card to get. Plus, you get like two lounge passes, um, which is it's nice. It's it's always nice to have lounge access if you can get it. If you have like a, a Chase Sapphire Reserve or American Express Platinum, American Express Platinum is probably the best when it comes to lounge access because you have the Centurion Lounge, but then you also have 
uh, the priority pass. So if you have priority pass, then that gives you loud lounge access, uh, which is good because you're able to stay in all these different lounges. Um, they're not they're not luxurious. Like they're not a first class lounge, and I got the first class lounge experience, and that was that was just a, out of this world. But uh, you do have a place to go that's outside of the regular terminal. Uh, so, and then you get snacks and stuff like that. And some of them have showers so you can take showers, which I don't know if you've ever taken a shower, like on a layover, but it's the best feeling in the world because you know how you get when you're on a plane, you just feel all sticky and it's just not a good experience being on a plane. You get off that plane, you go take a shower, you just feel re revived and it feels really good. So they do have, they do offer that and they offer Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So it, it just... It, it, it relaxes me. So when I go to a lounge, it relaxes me. I don't even care if the lounge has all these different amenities. As long as I'm in a different area and it's relatively quiet and I have a few snacks and, and stuff like that. And like I said, if they have a shower, then then I'm sold. I'm good with that. So uh, let's see. Just a few more. Okay. All right. So let's look at more of the card. I just want to kind of finish off with the card and then we'll we'll come back am i frozen right now i am frozen okay let's see i've been having issues with this this thing it just freezes me every once in a while so let me uh pull back here and see if we can't get this back up so am i frozen you guys can't see me right now let me know real quick What is going on with this thing? Okay. Testing, testing. Okay. Can you guys see me now? <laughs> Am I back? <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know what's going on, but... Uh, I use Streamlabs OBS. If you guys ever do live streams, you'll know what I'm talking about. And just let me know that everything's okay in the chat, just so I know that uh, <laughs> that you can hear me, you can see me, and I'm actually moving around. Uh, I'm not frozen anymore. Um, yeah, I have the Streamlabs OBS, and I've been I've been using this, and I I've been using like. I'm new to streaming, okay? I've been doing this for like three weeks, like steady for three weeks. Uh, prior, I did a couple of little tests way back when, but I've been having issues with it. I don't know what it's doing. It's just like just shutting off and the audio will just go out and it won't, you can't hear anything and the video will just freeze. So uh, I'm still working on it. I probably have to just update it. It's probably, there's probably a newer version and I just haven't updated it yet. So that's why it's, it's not uh, working properly. But what I was saying is we'll, we'll go back and we'll just go over. I want to go over the full card and then we'll start looking at some more of the chat and we'll, we'll answer some of those questions on there. So uh, some of the other things, there's no foreign transaction fees, which is great. So if you're traveling outside of the country, uh, you're not going to get any extra fees or anything like that. And this is one thing that uh, my first trip, I, the first trip I ever took out, outside the country was to Colombia. And... And I'm talking like flying to a different country. Now, I've gone on cruises before, but actually flying somewhere, the first place that I went was, was Colombia, and that was like eight years ago. And I used my debit card. I got a bunch of cash um, and just kept cash in my room and then took a little bit of cash with me where I was going, wherever I was going. Now, my whole setup is different. So I will, I'll, I'll bring some cash. So I will have a little bit of cash on me, but I use my credit card pretty much the whole trip. And it, it's just, it just saves me so much. I don't have to pay any foreign transaction fees. When you go to the ATM, they're going to charge you arm and a leg just to pull out cash. So uh, my, my routine now is to bring cash with me and then don't do the, the, don't um, transfer your money, not transfer your money, but don't redeem what am i trying to think of when you get your get cash you know get um pesos or wherever you're going 
Don't do the exchange. Don't do it at the airport. That's the worst place to do it. So if you can, if you can make it, and there are different ways you can do this. Now, you can think of Uber. You can just try to be creative. Like if I can catch an Uber to my hotel, then I'll do that. Uh, if they don't allow Uber, some places don't allow Uber. Medellin is one of the places they don't allow Uber at the airport. Um, it's not regulated, so they won't allow you to uh, you take an Uber at the airport. Well, then you might have to fork up, get you know, just get a little bit of money out uh, as far as or do a little bit of a, an exchange just to get you to where you're going. But if you can hold off, get into the city, then you can get much better value as far as your exchange rate. So. Uh, I will bring some cash with me, but then I'll have my credit card. I'll use my credit card for a lot of stuff. And uh, what I do a lot, too, is my buddy, he's kind of the opposite. He does have a couple of travel reward credit cards, but he doesn't really use them. So he just brings a lot of cash. So he'll bring all his cash, and then he'll do the exchange. And so what I'll do a lot of times is if I don't want to pull out cash, and he doesn't know about this. <laughs> well, he knows about it, but he doesn't know I'm doing this, I guess. Well, he knows. Ah, what am I saying? I, I don't think he's thinking about what I'm doing, but basically I'll pay for stuff like we'll go eat. I'll pay for that. Hey, just, you know, give me it in cash or in pesos or whatever. So now I don't have to go to the ATM and, and do the exchange and pay the, the bank fee plus the exchange rate and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, no, no foreign transaction fees. That's a good thing. Uh, transfer points, participating frequent flyer programs, one to one value. OK, so that's good to uh, you transfer it to one to one. So let's say I have 50,000 points and I want to fly uh, to New York from Los Angeles and it's it will cost me 25,000 points. Well, I can transfer those 20, 25,000 points from my Chase Ultimate Rewards uh, account to United and it's one to one. So I'm not losing any value. So there's there are certain situations where you in certain uh, credit cards points when you transfer them, you don't get the same value. So you get less value. A good, a good example, and this is this is way back. Uh, they don't have Virgin America anymore. I don't think they have Virgin America with, with the city cards anymore. But I had the city thank you uh, card or the city uh, premier card. So they had these thank you points. And I didn't know what I was doing at the time. And I just wanted to transfer my points over to, well, I knew what I was doing because I wanted to transfer my points over to Virgin America because I wanted to, I, at the time, I should have left them in city in, in, just as thank you points and not transferred them, but I didn't know. So I just transferred them over to the Virgin America and didn't realize that it is like half the value. So I had 50,000 points. I transferred them over to Virgin America and now only have 25,000 points. And that sounds bad, but the way Virgin America has set up their, their flights it's it's not a set fee. It's not a set amount of points. So it depends on the distance. So you can still get a lot of flights out of twenty five thousand points, but it, it it just like certain flights like United, they'll tell you okay, it's going to be twelve thousand five hundred points one way from here to Lo to Los Angeles or to uh, New York, and that's pretty much the standard. It doesn't really change. Uh, but with Virgin America, they they had different. Uh, Different distances, you, you could use less points. And then in certain times, they gave you better deals on, on different flights. So it, it's funny because I transferred 25,000 points. 25,000 points went to Virgin America, and I never I never flew Virgin America. To this day, I've never flown on Virgin America. But what I did is I had the 25,000 points there, and this is before they merged with Alaska Airlines. So when they merged with Alaska Airlines, Alaska Airlines was doing a bonus. So if you transfer a certain amount of points, they were giving you a bonus on top of that. So I went ahead and transferred them over and I ended up with like 52,000 points or something like that. And then I used the 52,000 points to fly business class from Thailand on Hanan Air to um, to the U.S. So that's how I flew. So I flew when I went to Thailand, I flew up on United and flew back on on a Hanan Air and Hanan Air. And I think Hanan Air is like a, a low budget airline. But their their customer service, their flight attendants were amazing. They were like very, very good. They were all over it. They were taking care of you and the food was 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 decent. Uh, the food on and I flew three legs. So I flew two legs business class and one leg was economy. Even when I flew on economy, 
the food was good. They had a amenity kit for flying on economy, which is, I don't know. It was unheard of. Okay, let me get back to this. I get on these tangents and <laughs> I can't stop. Okay, so auto rental. Okay, so you have this uh, primary insurance, which is good. So if you're if you want to rent a car and you, uh, I don't rent cars very often, so this doesn't really apply for me. But uh, if you want to rent a car, you get you can use them as your primary insurance. So you know when they all they always ask you, do you want insurance? And I usually tell them no, and I'll just use my own insurance, which you can use your own insurance as well. But you can use this as primary insurance. So if you do have an accident. Uh, you can use this as primary insurance. So that's good. Let's see. Uh, trip cancellation, uh, trip interruption insurance. Okay, so you have this insurance. I've never used this, actually. I, I need to look more into it, and it's my fault because I do travel a lot now. And I've only had a few times where, like I told you, told you about the American Express uh, situation, but I do need to look more into it just so I know exactly uh, what to expect when it comes to that. Uh, zero liability protection. Okay, I'd have to look more into that too. I don't, I don't even use that. I think it's, uh, let's see. Social office. Okay, I would have to look more into that one as well. Oh, just lost it here. Where did we go? Oh, it just pushed me to the bottom. Okay, so this is fine print stuff. You have to look into it. I, I honestly, like I said. When it comes to me and these travel co uh, credit cards, my main thing is I want to use the points to travel. Okay, now these other benefits are really good, and if you know them and if you're you're on it, uh, you can really uh, save yourself. Uh, you can make money you can, or make money. You can you can get money for different things like this, but you have to really look at the fine print. Uh, baggage delay insurance. So you need to look to see how long uh, the baggage. You know how long does the delay have to happen in order for you to get what amount of money. Um, and some of this stuff I knew, but I just can't even think of it offhand. If I did have a situation where my baggage was delayed for a period of time, then I would look at it. Uh, and I think back when in American, when the American airlines situation, when my baggage was delayed, uh, I think I did look into it. I'm almost positive I did, but it was a situation you had to be abroad. You couldn't be, at home. So because I was at home, I had all my amenities at home. So uh, they weren't going to give me any type of insurance on that. All right. So that's pretty much it um, on this. And now we'll look at the chat and we'll talk a little bit about uh, what's in the chat. Let's see here. Okay. Um, let's see. Is the chat pulling up? Are you guys able to see the chat? Let's see. It is not showing you guys anything, is it? I don't see anything on here. Are you guys able to see the chat at all? I know I have the screen up, but I don't see an actual. Let's see here. Let's see if I can pull this up again. There it goes. Okay, cool. All right, so let's look through here. Where did we leave off? Um, let's see, if you apply for United Card, apply to start off. Okay, so we went through all that. Let's see. Okay, Nika Baby says the San Francisco flights are always delayed. Yeah, I don't know. It <laughs> I've I've flown United out of out of uh out of uh, San Francisco and it was fine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And in the in the the kicker when it came to the whole uh, American the American Airlines uh American Airlines thing is they were just so the the people, the the customer service people, they weren't bad. But they were just so nonchalant about it. Like, you know, I get I get back and my luggage isn't here, and the guys is all nonchalant about it. Like it happens every day. Or I guess it, to him it does happen every day because that's <laughs> what he does. But it just, I mean, in that kind of 
irritates you even more because you're thinking in the back of your head, like, what's going on? Like, what's going on with this company? Are you guys just like, what is what is the deal? So, yeah, just didn't have a good experience at all. Uh, sorry, I missed the city premiere. OK, so seven he's talking about the city premiere. Yeah, I know the city premiere. They did offer um, or they are revamping their card. So they're giving you some more benefits with their card. Uh, and that's good. I mean, that that really helps. And this is the way I look at things. I look kind of like a, I look at it long term. So the way I look at it is you have City Premier up in their, their standards, uh, improving their card. You have the American Express Gold improving their card. So eventually you're going to have to have, your, Chase is going to have to do something. This is, this is just the way I feel. So Chase is going to have to do something to, update their cards and revamp their cards. And they've actually been going the other way instead of moving and giving you more benefits. They've actually been uh, reducing some of the benefits on, on some of their cards. So I am hoping <laughs> that because I, I want to keep chase, I want to stick with that chase ecosystem, at least for right now, I'm hoping that they do start improving some of their, their benefits. So let's see. Uh, I personally use my credit card in life. It is a huge department store or McDonald's. Oh, I personally don't use my credit card. Okay, so 70s doesn't use his credit card unless it's a huge department store or or McDonald's. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, 70s. So you personally don't use your credit card unless it's at a huge department store or McDonald's. Why McDonald's? I don't care. <laughs> is it? like trust things you think people are gonna get your identity or yeah I, I i will say um and this is just my experience now i i feel more comfortable using my credit card than using my debit card when i go places and the major reason for that is my credit card is not tied to my bank account so my debit card is tied to my bank account and I've had situations and this has happened to me twice. Well, it's actually happened. It's happened to me once on my bank account and then once on a, a PayPal account where people got my information, skimmed it. I don't know how they got it, but they got my imp information off my debit card and uh, did some like credit card transactions. So they went using my debit card, went to a gas station just swiped it and then went to, I think, a Home Depot and swiped it there. And so they were able to get, I think it was, I want to say it was like 400 or $600. And it was in the matter of, of a few hours. And the way that uh, the, the bank caught on to it is because there was a transaction done like 45 miles away from me. And then I did an actual transa transaction at a restaurant uh, right after, like two, three minutes after that. And so then they called me and told me, hey, we think something's going on fraudulent with your account. So they go over all my information. But it's coming directly from my bank account. So that's what I'm not comfortable with. So I'm more comfortable using a credit card because it's not tied to anything. And then what will happen is, uh, if that was a situation, you find out, because I always watch, I always look at my, my uh, credit card uh, account, and you can even get alerts now. I mean, with... Um, uh, with text messages and all the technology we have now, you're getting alerts right away. So I can get alert if my card's being used, uh, if I want to do that. And they're pretty good about doing the, the, the research they need to do and investigation and all that. And they're on it. Like if, if anything looks fraudulent to them, they're really on it. And you don't, and, and another thing too, that I don't like about uh, the bank that I bank with is or another reason I don't like using my debit card, and this has happened, and this is, I live in Los Angeles, I go to Las Vegas, and my card gets uh, flagged on the way to Vegas because I went to a gas station there, and then when I get to, when I actually get to uh, to Vegas, I call them because they called me, and I call them, I say, hey, no, there's nothing fraudulent going on, so then they start asking me these series of questions that I that I put in there years and years ago. And so one of them I couldn't remember. And so I give the wrong answer. And he was like, sorry, sir, we're going to have to <laughs> close your account. <laughs> so not close my account. I'm sorry. We're going to have to cancel your card. And I'm like, what? 
I'm in Vegas. I just got here, and you're you're canceling my card. And they're like, "Yep, sorry, sir. You're gonna have to go to uh, go to a local branch." <laughs> I just I lost it. So I went. I went to the branch, and so they give you a temporary card. But that temporary card, you have to, uh, you can't use it at at the. Um, uh, you can't use it like as a debit card or anything like that. So you had, it was just, it was, it was a mess. And so with a credit card, they're on it like they, and they know, so they'll know usually I'm using pretty much the same card. So if I book a flight, common sense, if I book a flight to, uh, to Columbia and they know what, you know, they can already, they can do the investigation and see, okay, he booked the flight. And then I end up in Columbia in the next couple of weeks or what have you. Well, they know that I booked that flight prior to, so I'm probably in Columbia. So I don't have to call them. Like with my debit card, anytime I leave anywhere, pretty much if I'm going out of my area, I usually call the bank and say, hey, look, I'm going to this area. I'm going to that area. Um, and it, I'm, I'm exaggerating. Las Vegas shouldn't even be one that I would have to call on. Um, and I generally don't. But if I'm going outside of the country, with my debit card, I will call and just let them know that I'm going outside the country just so they, they know. Uh, I think you can even do it online now at my bank. So it's good. But yeah, I, I, I'm more comfortable using credit card. That's just, that's just me. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Nico baby. I'll have to look at Charles Schwab. Okay. So you guys are talking about Charles Schwab. So yeah, getting a checking account with them and you don't have to pay, like if you're out of the country, I think you don't pay any fees for uh, for withdrawals. So uh, yeah, Charles Schwab is, a, is a, good, a good thing to have when you're, if you're outside of the US and you're trying to get money out and stuff like that. Uh, let's see, Nico Baby, no minimum. If the seven fees, the only thing is opening a checking account will also open a brokerage account. You keep a dollar in the account. Okay. Let's see. Nika Baby Virgin got bought by Alaska. Can they face it out? Okay. Yeah. And I don't, I haven't followed up on the whole Virgin America thing. So I don't even know if they still have their, if they're still Virgin America Airlines, like planes. Because I know initially they said that they were going to keep, they were going to keep the planes separate so you can, fly so because a lot of people like just flying on that plane it was uh the colors and lively and just the experience was good so i don't know if they changed that or not uh let's see let's see okay so seven z says yes uh it's for safety reasons i use cash so what what are we talking about uh seven z as far as cash i think i missed something on the on the um on the chat here when you're talking about using cash because with me and this is like i said this is me and we all have our different ways of doing things but i don't like uh i don't like carrying a lot of cash and i i never have even when, even when i'm out you know out here where i live and all that i don't like carrying a lot of cash and especially if i'm traveling i don't want to have a bunch of cash on me because one, I don't want to be a target, and two, I don't want to have to keep up with it. Like, if uh, like now I have a good, a pretty good system where I'll bring some cash, maybe two, three hundred dollars, and then I'll use my credit card. And if I'm going for five, six days, and I have two or three hundred dollars of actual cash, I'm usually okay. Like, I'm fine. I use my card, restaurants, pretty much anything that I, that I'm purchasing, I'm using my my uh, card. And then I'll use the cash when I need to use the cash. And then if I need to pull out a little extra money, I will pull out uh, some money. And like I said, I do this whole thing with my buddy where <laughs> I'll pay for dinner or I'll book an excursion or I'll do this or I'll do that. And then he'll just reimburse me with cash uh, because he he likes doing that. He likes bringing all the cash because what I do, what, what he does, I'll, I'll speak on him. What he does is he brings a bunch of cash and then he'll put it in the safe and then it'll just be in the safe, but he's got all this cash on him. So it's just, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm really not comfortable with that, but uh, some people, yeah, some, it works for some people. Let's see. Overseas, my credit card company won't be able to contact me. Oops. Tell 
So Nika Baby's talking about having she had two of her accounts hacked. Yeah, it 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 does go around. Uh, the good thing is most in most situations the bank will they will uh, uh, cover the cost. Um, and I did have a PayPal situation that happened to me too, and that one was a little scarier because uh, I don't use my PayPal very often, and I just happened to have money in there because I sold I sold a camera on eBay. So I had like $900 in that account. And uh, of course I was gonna transfer that money over into my bank account, but I hadn't gotten around to it yet. And someone in like Ecuador or El Salvador or something made a purchase and I got a notification uh, through my PayPal. And I looked at it, I'm like, I didn't, it was like $680 or something. It's like I didn't I didn't purchase anything for six hundred and eighty dollars. So I called them. This is within ten minutes. I called PayPal. And as soon as I got that as soon as I got that message, I think it wasn't even a message, it was an email. I happened to be looking at my emails and I'm like, I didn't make this purchase. So I called them and they told me, and this is the weirdest thing. Like this is a you know, I just have a, a PayPal account and I do have a, a debit card that's attached to that account. So they told me that there was nothing that they can do about it like up front. And I'm thinking, I'm calling you right now. I'm telling you that I didn't make this purchase. This is where I live. This was, you know, and it said on there kind of like a, it was a, it was like a website or like a web account or something. I don't know. It was, it said something about El Salvador or something like that on it. So the guy looks into it. He's on the phone with him. He's looking into it. And he says, oh yeah, no, it, yeah. It looks like it was in another country. That's where it was uh, purchased some supermarket out in this other country. And I was telling him, yeah, I didn't make that purchase. And he was like, well, there's nothing we can do about it right now. We have to let the transaction go through because at the point, at, at that point, the transaction was made, but the money hadn't transferred over to, to that, that account yet, or to, you know, whoever was made that purchase, uh, to the, to the supermarket. And so I said, well, you can't just stop it right now. I'm telling you, it's not, it's not me. He was like, no, we have to let the transaction go through and then we'll do the investigation and then we'll reimburse your, your account. And so that was kind of scary to me because I'm thinking they're going to let this money just go, like go over to the, be, they're not going to stop it. They could stop it right away. I, I don't know. In my, in my mind, the way I'm thinking about it is they can stop it right away. And so the, the transaction won't go through and then do their investigation. And if they find out that, I did make that purchase, then, you know, let it go through or what have you. But no, sure enough, a couple days later, that money came out, that $680 came out of my account, went over to wherever. And then a couple of days after that, then they did their investigation, they reimbursed me, and then they sent me an email. I'm just thinking, that's just so backwards. Like, I don't, that's why, that's why I'm saying credit cards for me, uh, I'm all about that because in that same situation, $680. I didn't spend that $680. I call the credit card company and tell them, Hey, I didn't spend this money. All it's, it's not coming out of my bank account or anything. All they're going to do is they're going to look into it and then they'll just credit. So they'll take that $680 off what I would owe, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the statement. So yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. That stuff does happen. All right, let's see. Uh, 70, it's $5 us three for four days. Let's see the problem with female. Okay. So you guys are talking about phones now and you got to understand the chat keeps moving up. So I do miss some, some of the, uh, things. If you guys have questions, just, uh, make sure you put question marks on there and I can kind of hunt those down. Let's see. I only carry a day of cash to about $60. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really, when it comes to cash, I will carry a little bit, but I don't, I don't carry much and 300. Usually when I go on a trip, it's $300 that I will have. And then once I spend that, then I, I'll go, I'll go and get a little more cash out. But it, to me, it just works better that way. And then I'll always have like, and I usually wear, uh, you guys probably already know, I wear shirts like this all the time. Uh, the nice thing about these shirts, these are like a, more like military kind of tactical shirts, but they usually have a zipper in them. So this one has there's a zipper. Yeah. There's, so there's a zipper pocket doing a whole wardrobe thing here, but there's a zipper 
I'm gonna get the zipper out. So there's a zipper pocket here, so I can put stuff in here. And when I'm flying, I like wearing. I definitely like wearing a shirt like this because I put all my important stuff, my uh, passport and my wallet and all that. I'll put it in the zipper pocket, so I'm not gonna lose it. It's gonna stay here. And then this, this one also has, and I can't really lift it up. You're not gonna be able to see it, but it also has a little credit card pocket that zips up, and this goes underneath your your clothes. I did a review on this shirt, this tactical shirt, it's like a Black Hawk shirt. And if so, if you check on my channel, just type in uh, Black Hawk shirt, like travel shirt or what have you, and it will give you more information about this shirt. And I, I kind of go over everything because I really like for travel. When I'm flying, this is a shirt that I'll have on because it just has all these pockets and I can put all my stuff in and I don't have to worry about uh, losing anything. So uh, I always have, so what I was going back to, so I'll have a credit card, I'll have my credit card, I'll have a stash credit card and uh, ID that's in a, in a separate area. Just so if I, God forbid, lose something, lose my wallet, lose something, you know, my credit cards and all that stuff, I'll still have at least a credit card and another ID, uh, another form of ID. So if it's like my California ID or I have my global entry card or I have, uh, uh, what other ID? I have another one of those passport cards that they're not good. They're only good for like driving into from land to land. So if I were to go from Los Angeles to uh, Tijuana or Mexico or like that, I, can, I have a card for that. So, all right, let's look at some of these other questions here. Um, all Druid Illusions, Sevensies, where do you travel? That's interesting. I I would that that's a good question. I want to know where you guys travel to. Like where what's your what's your let's just do it this the easy way. What's your favorite destination that you've gone to? Uh and I'm at a point right now where let's see, let me rattle off the places I've gone to in the last couple of years. So I've gone to Aruba, I went to Costa Rica, I went to Colombia several times. Uh, I went to uh I've gone to Thailand and where else i've gone to a couple of other places paris um a couple of other places but now i'm at a point where 2019 is right around the corner and the way that i kind of set up my my trips is every three months i go on a trip outside of the country so that's kind of the way that i've been doing it uh, i might increase that so i might even go not every every three months, but I might even do every two months. Uh, luckily, I have a job where I have three days off every every week. So uh, if I want to do a short trip, like Colombia is a good example. I like going to Colombia a lot because I can do a, a five-day trip and I can do a red eye and get to Colombia early in the morning. Uh, so early, let's say, for example, I have Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off every week. So if I take a Friday off and I take a uh, a Tuesday off. Well, now I have five days and then I can do a red eye flight on Thursday. So work Thursday, Thursday night, jump on a plane, do a red eye to uh, Florida. And then from Florida, it's just a hop over. It's like two hour uh, flight to, to Columbia. And so I, I like doing that trip and that's five days. So I'm only really taking two days, two days off. So, uh, I like to do that a lot. And so I need to start thinking about what I'm going to be doing next year because I haven't really planned for anything. So I'll, I'll, there are a few different places that I'm interested in. Uh, I will say my favorite destination still to this day is Colombia. I really love going there. So uh, I've had some good experiences. Other places, Paris for me was okay. Uh, Thailand Thailand was nice. I just, the food wasn't, I didn't like the food. That was just, that's just me. Maybe I'm picky about food. I don't know, but I've gone to all these other places and I've, the food's been fine. But for Thailand, for whatever reason, just my, my food experience wasn't the same. It, it just tastes different. Everything tastes different over there to me. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, Seven Zs says you just came back from Thailand or from Bangkok. Um, Aldridge, I love Malaysia. Um, 
yeah, Malaysia is a place that I'd be interested in going to. I know Thailand, eh, kind of the same, uh, same area. Singapore is another place that I'd be interested in going to. Uh, Bangkok, no, I didn't go to Bangkok when I went. I just went to, uh, I just went to Phuket. I was there the whole time. Uh, we were there for, I was in Phuket for like ten days, ten or eleven days. So it was a good time. I had a good time there. It's just the food wasn't. It wasn't what I thought. Like, I thought Thailand would just have amazing food. I like Thai food. I get to Thailand, and the food just didn't taste. It didn't, it wasn't, it didn't taste good to me. I mean, there were a few a few dishes that I had that were good, but for the vast majority of the food that I ate wasn't, wasn't, it was, <clears throat> let me just say this. It was average. The food was average. And the best food that I had, and this is crazy, but we went on um, elephant, uh, we went to an elephant sanctuary. And uh, I wanted to do the elephant sanctuary. I didn't want to do the whole elephant ride thing. I'm not getting on an elephant. And plus, I, I, I've been told that they don't treat those those uh, elephants very, uh, very well when it comes to the the um, elephant rides and all that. And you see them like it, it, it's crazy. You're in a car and you look over to your side and you see this elephant walking on the side of the, the freeway. It's just crazy because. These elephants are huge. Like when I went to the elephant sanctuary, I've never been up close to an elephant. Like you'll go to the zoo and all that. You'll see them. They'll be out. But I've never been like standing right in front of an elephant or driving past an elephant. And elephants are, they are huge. I mean, they're, they're, it's impressive how big they are. And you could just think they could just crush you with just, just in a matter of seconds. So uh, anyway. All right. Um, let's see. Anything that we. Let's see. Okay, Flyer Talk Forum. 70s talking about the Flyer Talk Forum. Uh, I have I've gone in there before, and it's those are the forms are really good. Forms are good. The points guy is really good. I would highly if you if you don't really. If you're just starting out, get on the points guy, get on that website and start looking at their stuff. Um, I have a link right here, not a link, but I have some stuff on here. Let's see, let's switch over. So this is the points guy website and it's, and I'm not being paid by them. I've never done a, uh, a blog. Like I've never written a blog for them or anything. I have nothing attached to, to them at all, but this is where I started. When I first got I got into this whole thing, I start I got on his website and I started looking at all his different stuff. And it's good because every day they'll have news, they'll have reviews, so they'll review some of these airplanes. Uh, they'll talk about some of the deals that are out there because even though you have points, I still look for deals. So if I can find a good deal and pay cash for a deal and save my points for something else, I'll do that. So you might be able to fi uh, find like a um, uh, good airfare and you pay for the airfare. It's like $400 or $500. And then you use the points for your hotel stay. Uh, so I I've done that plenty of times. And, and there are situations where I will look. And there are some situations where the value of your, your points, your points are more valuable than the actual cost of the, of the flight. And so why not just pay for the flight? save your points and then you can use your points to get better value with something else or, or using it for somewhere else. So uh, I highly recommend going on this site and they, they do an amazing job and amazing job on all the different credit cards. They'll show you and you have to understand these are all affiliate links. So when you do click on them, they do get a percentage. So they might not be totally unbiased, but they do a good job and they will they'll, they'll put out the stuff that that they think is are the, the premier cards. And then they will analyze cards, too, uh, which is good. They'll analyze the cards. They'll tell you uh, different values that you can get, how you can get different values uh, out of the card, different transfer partners that you can use in order to uh, get the different value. So it's a good website. Uh, I highly recommend that one. So. Flyer Talk form is good as well, but this one's just a little more user friendly. When you get on there, uh, there's a lot of information that uh, they kind of walk you through. 
So it's not the question and answer. Well, they do have question and answer stuff, but you also can get good deals by looking on there. And I'm I'm pretty much sold on them because my trip to to Paris was because of this website and because of their Twitter, actually their Twitter account. So I had them on my Twitter and I've told this story a few times, but I, I want to share it again just because I think it's it's a pretty good uh, story. I was on, um, I got a tweet it was late at night, it's like probably around now. It's like, it was like three in the morning. I get a tweet and it says that, and this it's coming from the points guy. And it says that uh, there might be a mistake, but it looks like the Hyatt Regency in Etoile, Paris, uh, is showing rooms for like $21 a night. And so I happen to be up. And so I'm like, oh, let me look. So I go on there. I go on their website. Sure enough, $21 a night is showing at the Hyatt Regency E12. And I'm thinking, okay, and this is like one of my fir- the first times. This was one of the first times that I transferred points. I think it actually for... For Hyatt, it was. For Hyatt, it was the first time that I transferred my ultimate reward points over to Hyatt. And so it was late at night, and I'm like, wow, it is showing $21. And so, actually, no, no, let me take that back. I didn't even have to transfer points. What am I thinking? Okay, it's getting late. (laughs) Getting delirious now. Um, I transferred my points later to book my flight, but I didn't transfer my points right away. So it was showing $21 a night. And so... I get on, so I'm already on the website. I'm, I see that, so I book five nights. It comes to $114, and I'm thinking, wow, okay, it's showing $114. It's showing a confirmation for five nights in Paris at the Hyatt Regency Etoile. And like I said, Hyatt Regency is kind of their mid tier. So you have with Hyatt, you'll have the Hyatt Place, which is their, their that's their kind of their lower lower category hotels, and then you'll have like the Hyatt House or the Hyatt Hyatt House, I think it's called. Yeah, Hyatt House, which is more of like a uh, long, more long term living where they have like little kitchen and all that area, the kitchen area and all that. And then you have Hyatt Regency. Then you have Park Hyatts and uh, the um, uh, Andals. And you have all these different hotel, different hotel names. But Hyatt Regency is usually about in the middle. And Hyatt Regencies are generally pretty, pretty nice. They're just kind of the older Usually they're the older hotels. So I had it booked and I'm thinking, wow. And so what I did is I got on the forum. So they had, they had, uh, you know, they had the comments at the, at the end of like an article. So they had the comments and I'm looking at the comments and people are saying, oh yeah, I got in, I got in, I got in. And, and, you know, everybody's all excited. Well, one of the people thought of the bright idea to call the Hyatt uh, Regency and ask them, is this the correct, <laughs> is this the correct fee, like the correct uh, amount? So the Hyatt Regency caught on to it and they realized, oop, we made a mistake. And so after that, I waited for about a week. I didn't do anything. Like I didn't call them. I didn't do anything. I just left it as B and it showed confirmed you know, $114 is how much you're paying and all that. So I waited and about a week and a half later, they put out another on on the points guy. They put out another little uh, article, and it talked about uh, the fact that people are saying that they were able to, well, that they honored the the actual booking. And so then I checked my email. Sure enough, they honored it. So basically, they said or we had a, com- a, a computer glitch, and it was showing the wrong fee and. You know, it was a mistake. However, we're going to honor your stay. Uh, So enjoy your trip to Paris. And I'm thinking, what? I just paid $114 for five nights to stay at the Hyatt Regency E12. And so at that same time, after I booked it, uh, the same night that I booked it, after I booked it, I said, you know, I just want to know how much these are like really going for. So after I looked at the comments and someone spilled the beans and called the Hyatt Regency, then I looked at it again and the price was like 600 and 600 and something dollars a night, one night. And so, uh, yeah, I made out. And so since then I'm religiously will go on the points guy, I have them on my Twitter and I will check all their stuff. So anytime something like that comes up again, I'll be ready to jump on it. So, uh, that, that was just that experience. All right. Let's see. 
Okay, you guys are doing a lot of chat in here. Uh, Lion. I am planning a group trip to Thailand. And any insight on what to do? Airlines, hotels versus Airbnb. So if you're going with a group, um, if you're going with a group, I would recommend first doing research when it comes to Thailand. Do your research. So it depends on where you're staying, obviously. Uh, find out. I get on, uh, what's the site? Uh, oh, God. Oh, man, I can't think of the name of the site. TripAdvisor. Get on TripAdvisor and look at the different Airbnbs. Uh, and it's easy. You pretty much just, well, Airbnbs are a little harder, but you can look at the hotels. Uh, but look at the hotels and see what the ratings say uh, as far as the hotel, what people are saying as far as the reviews. My main thing when I travel, and I made this mistake when I went to Thailand. I did a video uh, a couple of weeks, uh, did a live stream actually, and I t just talked about Thailand. So I won't go over that whole story, but uh, check out that video because I, I, I talk uh, a lot about getting stuck in a hotel. Uh, but my, my big thing is location. I want to be in the right location. So I will, I will trade like a real luxury place for a decent place. I, I still need a decent hotel or a decent Airbnb. But if it's in a, a good location, that's what I want. Because I want to be able to walk to different places. I don't want to have to catch a cab everywhere I go. So that's something that's important to me. Uh, Thailand is, Thailand is, is, depending on where you go, like I went to Phuket, uh, you're you're probably gonna you want to be in an area where you can walk to restaurants and all that, but you are gonna need to travel a little ways if you want to kind of see all the different uh, different places and uh, if you want to go see the big Buddha they have there, if you want to go to um, Krabby so you can go to some of these different islands, things like that. So you're gonna have to you are gonna have to travel uh, a little ways, and you're probably not gonna want to drive. I didn't, um, the, you know, the, <laughs> the roads are the opposite. So I wasn't trying to drive cause me, I would, that would, yeah, it wouldn't be good. I would forget and end up on the wrong side of the road. But, um, so you are going to want to travel. I mean, you're, you're going to want to leave and go to different destinations and I don't know, I can't speak for Chiang Mai or, or Bangkok or, or any of the other places, Pattaya. I didn't go to those different places. Uh, I can speak mainly for, for Phuket. And uh, I would do the research. Airbnbs are good. If you're in a group, Airbnbs are, they're perfect. Like, because you can, you guys can all split the costs and you can stay in some pretty nice places. Uh, but like I said, the main thing is location. Thailand and, and Phuket. I'll speak for Phuket. The taxis are not cheap. Like they, they will really, I mean, you can haggle with them, but that first price, like they don't have meters. Let's just put it that way. So you don't have taxis with, they do have metered taxis, very few. Most of the taxis that you're going to see are going to be, they're just going to quote you a price. You're going to say, Hey, I need to go to the mall. And they're going to say 300 baht, like pretty much anywhere I wanted to go. Like that was local 300 baht. And that's like nine dollars. So it's like that's you go to just for example, just comparison. When I go to Colombia and Medellin, it's like three dollars and you can go 15, 20 minutes away. Uh, we had a guide taking us around. We were paying him one hundred dollars and he was driving us around all day, like 10 hours. So, yeah, it can get it can get pretty pricey in Thailand. But I I would look at Airbnb as far as flights. If you have points, if you can use points, really try to do that. I, like I told you, I flew United. I was able to fly business class all the way, and it was 75,000 points. That's a one way. Um, but for me, flying 10, 11, 12-hour flights, if you can put me in business class, I'm, I'm in heaven because I can lay down, I can go to sleep. That's my big thing. Uh, being in the economy is really tough. That's a tough flight. So just be aware of that. So if you have the points that you can use the points, I would definitely go with that. If you want to fly economy, I think it was more around 45,000 points, something like that. Uh, if you want to buy a ticket outright, it's probably going to cost you for economy. It's like $1,300, $1,400. And it depends, obviously, when, you, when you're flying out. But uh, it, it's, it's not cheap. All right. Um, and... 
let's see. Amsterdam is my favorite. Okay, so Aldridge. I Amsterdam is a place that I, I'd like to travel. I'd actually, I want to go back to, well, I want to go to Spain. I want to do Spain, Italy, and then go back to Paris for a little bit. I didn't have that much time in Paris. Uh, although the people weren't very friendly in, in Paris, I did like, because I'm a photographer, I did like all the history there. Uh, so I wanted to go and take more pictures and five nights just wasn't enough. So I, I would like to spend some more time there. Uh, and I definitely want to go to Italy for pictures as well. And then I've heard some pretty good things about Spain. So those are the places where I want to go. But when I'm in that area, I might jump over to Amsterdam. Uh, that, that sounds like a good place to go too. Okay. Let's see, seven Z's, traveling with a group of friends is awesome. Eating and drinking, uh, they are very affordable. Yeah, yeah, group group trips are great because you can split the costs. And it, especially if it's Airbnb, uh, it, it, it's, it's pretty reasonable. Like me and my buddy, when we were in Columbia, we stayed in an Airbnb. And it was a good experience. I mean, he had his own room. I had my own room. He had his own bathroom. I had my own bathroom. Uh, we had a kitchen. We had a washer dryer. Um, although we didn't use the kitchen, it was still there. So if we wanted to cook food, we could. Uh, but we were kind of in a, we had a, a kind of a set routine where we would go, we'd get up in the morning and our guide would come pick us up. Actually, he became our buddy. He's, he's our friend to, today. Like he's our friend now. We talk to him all the time on Facebook and all that. But our friend would come pick us up, take us out. So we took pictures all day, and then we'd get back at probably around 5 or 6 o'clock, take a nap, then get up at night, or not get up at night, but get up a couple hours later, take a shower, and then go out on the town, go to Parque Yeres, and go to all these different clubs and all that stuff, uh, and then get home late at night, and then sleep for a couple of hours, or a few hours, and then get up and do it all over again. So we did that for like five days. So, uh, yeah, it's... It's just a good setup. So if you do have all that, one of the big things that I like about Airbnbs, if you can find one that has a washer dryer, which most of them do, because most of them are apartments, do the washer dryer thing. Because I was able to bring just a carry on and my personal item. And I didn't have to pack another bag. And I love that because once you get, you don't have to go to the baggage claim. So when you get there, you just go straight to customs, get out and, and, and you're you're in the in the city or in the in the country. Or you if you're uh, coming back, you don't have to go to baggage claim. So that's a big thing for me. I can pack for five days easily in a carry on pack for five days, get out there, wash my clothes and, and I'm good. In Thailand, it was even better because I packed a, a carry on uh, there as well. But they have all these different laundry services everywhere. And I did a video about this too. So uh, uh, you guys can check that out on my channel. But they have these laundry services and they're very, very inexpensive. Uh, God, I want to say it might have been uh, $12, I think. I think it was like $12 to wash all of my clothes. And I had like, like wash, uh, iron, and fold all of my clothes uh, that I brought. So like six or seven different uh, changes of, of outfit. And so I did it twice when I was there. And I, I want to say, I want to say it was $12. It might actually, you know what? It might've been $10. I think it was between nine and $10, 10 or $9. <coughs> <coughs> but I was able to do that. And it's funny because I did it the first time and I still had clean clothes. And so uh, by the end of the trip, I did it again. And the reason that I did and this is silly, but the reason that I did it again is just so I didn't have to pack my clothes because they folded it and all that. And it was all clean and everything. And so I just put it in my luggage just like that. And so, it was, <laughs> so that's the reason I did it the last time. So it was like, it's like $10, very reasonable. Uh, it's not expensive at all. And they do it by weight. So it depends on how much your, your clothes weigh. Okay. Uh, Nika, baby, goals of seeing Columbia. Yeah, Col you got to go to Columbia. Nika, you need to go to Columbia. That place is, it, it, it's nice. Um, China, and this is just me. I've been to China. Well, I haven't gone 
uh, I haven't gone to China. Okay, so I was in China in in the airport in Beijing for hours, like eight hours. Uh, what I did notice about China, just being at the airport, I had I've, I ate a few different things there while I was there. I was in the lounge. I ate some. They had like a buffet style food and all that. Um, it doesn't taste the same as like the Chinese food that you eat out in the states. It's not as it's not as spicy and not as uh, the flavors aren't as like the flavors out in in the states are more. Uh, there, there are more flavors. The, I didn't. It was pretty bland. The food that I had uh, in in China. So, and like I said, I was at the airport. So, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, and then I did eat like some of their like their Burger King and their other places that they had there. And yeah, it was it was just okay. But China is one of those places. I'd like to go to China. Uh, and I probably will actually go to China at some point and, and go around town. But it's uh, it's kind of a secret, more of a secret society kind of place for me. And I like, like I said, I like photography. I want to get out, take pictures of all this different stuff. And I know they have a lot of nice places to take pictures uh, in China. So that's what's kind of drawing me uh, to them. Uh, but I've heard some horror stories about cameras and camera equipment. And I had a horror story myself. And I just, I was at the airport where uh, they went through all of my stuff. Like, and this is the, the, the weird part about China, uh, the weird part about this whole situation, I wasn't going into China. I was just, I was just, I had my carry-on, my carry-on stuff. All I was doing was going from one part of the terminal to another part of the terminal, but I had to go through security. And so when I went through security, everything in my bag in my, uh, cause I had a camera, like a camera bag, like my personal item, everything had to come out. And so I had to take all my stuff out and it just, man, <laughs> it was, it was pretty frustrating. Cause it took me like 20 minutes to get everything back into my bag. And, uh, then on my, my way back. So I flew on my way up. That's, I had to do that. And then on my way back, uh, I went back through China or I had to stop at, uh, lay over in China again. Same thing. I had a better experience only. Well, it was a better situation because I was like VIP because I flew, uh, I flew business class uh, to China. And so when I got off the plane, I had like, I had a guy there waiting for me, escorting me. So he escorted, he walked me through and all that. So he took me to another security area that wasn't like the main security. And so it was just me and the lady and she's looking through all my stuff. And I had these little magnets that I put on top of my vehicle or not my vehicle, but like what I'll do is I have a little action camera and I'll ask, I'll usually ask the taxi guy and they're usually pretty good about it, but, uh, it's, it's, it's rubber, it has a rubber, rubber thing and it has a magnet on the inside and it has a little tripod thing and you just put it on, put it on anything metal and it will stick. It's not going anywhere. And so I like to just put it on the hood so I can get like a action shot of, of my trip, whatever for my, for videos that I do. So I had that. So I had two magnets and they were stuck together, which I shouldn't have had them stuck together. If they weren't stuck together, I wouldn't have lost them. They were stuck together. And so she's going through all my stuff and she sees that and she's like pulling on it. And she's thinking, what is this? And it's so the magnet's so tight. It won't. I mean, it's so strong. She couldn't pull it apart. And so I pull it apart and she was like, oh, magnet. No, you can't have magnets. So she took both of them. And I'm like, oh, they're like 30 bucks a piece. But still. <laughs> all right. Um. So Nika Baby, we were talking about Colombia, and Colombia is C O L O. It's not you. I know in in the states we have Columbia, and or Columbia University in Colombia we use U, but there it's O, and they will correct you if you spell it wrong. <laughs> uh, China, Brazil, Brazil is a place I want to go. Definitely, I want to go to Brazil, Peru. Peru is also a place that I'm interested in. Uh, Ethiopia, I don't know. I don't know about Ethiopia. Uh, South Africa for sure, um, but yeah, there's there's there are a lot of places that I want to go, but I just need to uh, do some more research. So this year, I'm trying to think of different places to actually travel to. Okay, what else do we have? I like both TPG and Million Mile Secrets blog. Uh, Million Mile Secrets. I haven't looked at his blog. 
Um, that might be on boarding area, maybe. I don't know. I haven't. I don't think I've looked at his blog. Uh, but boarding area is another good uh, site to look at because they have a, a lot of different blogs that are tied to boarding area. So if you go on boarding area, you can see all the different blogs, and it's cool because they just pull it up as like a feed, like kind of a news feed, so you can see all the different blogs with their their uh, title or their subjects and stuff that they're talking about. So that's a pretty good one as well. Uh, seven Z's, uh, let's see, Amos Platinum and City Prestige, if you don't mind the high annual fee. Okay, so you're answering questions from someone else. Let's see, do we know which airline has a hub? In the, okay, yeah, and Nika Baby is talking about the, uh, I think it's easy. Yeah, Nika Baby is talking about the, the hubs. So if you can find, like, um, if you can find what airlines have hubs near your air where you live, it, it, it you should look into getting the getting that card, that credit card, if you can, uh, the airline credit card. If you're fine with flying on on that uh, uh, that air carrier, because if they have a hub, then you just have more opportunities. They have more available space, and what you will find when you when you get the travel award cards. What you're going to find is that they have reward seats. So you have these points, right? And they have reward seats. Not air, all airlines do this. Some airlines have no blackouts, but a lot of the airlines will have blackouts. So they'll have reward space only and then regular space. So they still have space on the plane, but they only have a certain amount of uh, reward space. So you have to look on there and say, okay, United is United will have it. So they have their mileage plus program and you have your points and you look on there and you say, okay, I can book this flight on this day, but I can't book it on this day because they don't have any reward space available or they might have reward space available, but the price is hiked way, way up. So it's not even worth it. So you do, uh, one thing that I didn't mention, you do need to be flexible. You have to be flexible on your travel times, uh, dates. And so if you can be flexible, you can really maximize, but uh, you, you can't uh, you can't just expect to to be able to just get out there and book any flight, any, any flight that's available. You're not always gonna be able to do that. And so what I do sometimes, I might not be able to fly with friends or I might not be able to fly with my family because I'm using points and they don't have any um, available reward space on that same flight, so. That happens sometimes. Okay, seven Z's. Let's see. The quality of Airbnb depends on the city. Avoid Airbnb in Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. And no, you're 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 absolutely hundred percent correct. I, I like I said, I look at location. That's my main driving uh, driving force. So if it's in a, a good area, uh, I'll do my research on the on the Airbnb and. I'm a fan of Airbnb. I wasn't, uh, last year I wasn't, like I wasn't really into Airbnb. I wanted to stay at a hotel, just more comfortable there. And now I like Airbnbs. I like the whole, the way the setup is. So uh, I'll definitely stay in more Airbnbs in the future. Okay, let's see. Okay, Sevens is telling me that I should go to Japan and China is huge. Yeah, I Japan is another place that that I'm interested in going to as well. Uh, these are places that it's not they're they're on my list. Let's just say that uh, China still is on my list, even though like it, going through there is hectic if you have camera equipment, and that's that's the only thing that's kind of a nightmare for me. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I flew into to China and then they went through all my stuff. When I got to Thailand, I was dreading, and I had still had, what, 10 more days to be in Thailand. I was dreading coming back because I was thinking, oh, man, they're going to go through all my stuff again. I have to take everything out. I had to kind of alter the way that I packed all my stuff just because of that whole situation. And all I had was a carry-on. So I had a carry-on and a personal item. So it's not like I could just pack stuff and put it in my checked luggage. So, yeah, it was – and sure enough, they go through all my stuff. And, yeah, I, I just didn't – I don't know. I could imagine if I'm going into China, they're probably going to be even more strict on me, on my bags and all that stuff. So I don't know. That that just, I mean, that rubbed me wrong. But 
Japan is is definitely a place that would be on my list. Let's see, unique ability. I really just want to see the Great Wall in China, and the temples. Uh, I'm on the Seven World Wonders tour. Seeing four. Wow, that's good, Nika, baby. She's seeing four of the Seven Wonders. I haven't really thought about like that. Hey, I want to do the the Seven Wonders. That would be cool, though. I guess I could start by going to Peru because Peru is probably one of my next stops. Uh, on my way, well, stop in Peru for a couple of days and then go to Colombia. So yeah, that that could be my because I think that's Machu Picchu is a seven one seventh one seven wonder right, <laughs> seven world wonders. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, the Great Wall of China is ruined. It's better on video. So much people. It's better to go to. Thailand to look at the Kira Kata ruins. Uh, I want to see all the survivors. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to have to wrap it up because it's getting early, I should say. And it's Christmas. So, I'm going to have to get a little bit of sleep so I can <laughs> get up. I'm frozen again. Oh. Let's see. I know you guys can still hear me. But let's see. Let me pull this back up. Yeah, I don't understand this thing. I'm really going to have to figure this out. All right. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Why it keeps freezing. I'm going to have to fine tune this stuff. So I should be unfrozen, hopefully. And the audio looks like it's working, so you guys should still be able to hear me. Yeah, so uh, let's see here. Seven Zs, if you plan to go to China in the near future, suggest getting the China visa now. You pay $140 for 10 years. Okay, that's good to know. And that's another thing, too, um, the, <laughs> the, uh, the whole visa situation. And that, that kind of scared me because... I did my research ahead of time, so I knew I was going to Thailand, and I think you can stay. I think you can stay in China for 24 hours or less, and not ha and you don't have to have a visa, and you have to have a flight that that's going somewhere else within that 24 hours. So uh, they will allow you to to actually leave the airport. So I could have left. I had the eight hour layover. I could have left the airport and gone into the city and maybe gotten something to eat, went to a restaurant, did some sightseeing, and then got back. But uh, I I was done. As soon as I went through the checkpoint and they went through all my stuff, I was just like, you know what? I'm set. I'm not getting out, and I'm not going through this again. So I was just there. But um, they, will, they will allow you to do that. Now, if you are going to China, you do need a visa. So, and a visa is not a passport. <laughs> a visa is something in addition to a passport. So, you have to go there and I think you go to the airport. I'm not sure exactly where you go, uh, but you do need to get that visa. And uh, Nika is saying that it's, uh, what did you say? It's, well, no, no, actually, 7Z is saying that it's $140 for 10 years. So, getting that's, getting, that's not that bad, actually, for for. 10 years, that's not bad, $140. Uh, let's see. Nika says, I got denied for my China visa because I didn't have enough pages in my passport. I tried to go for Xmas. Okay, so I don't know about the pages in your passport. I do know if you are getting, and I, I'm renewing my passport. I need to do that. Like, it's, I need to do it in January because... My passport expires in August and you have to have in order to travel outside the country. I think you have to have like at least six months uh, before your passport expires. So I do I do need to renew my passport. And I was told that you can get uh, you can get extra pages. And that's what I'm going to recommend or that's what I'm going to ask for when I get my passport or renew my passport. You can have them put extra pages and they won't charge you anything. Now, if you have a passport already and you need to get extra pages, then they charge you. So it's just in your best interest. Whenever you get a passport, always ask them to go with the extra pages uh, option. And I think I'm able to do it. I meet all the categories. So I think I'm able just to do it online 
and send in my old passport and a new picture and they'll go ahead and take care of everything and they will send you back your old passport too so you can have that just that's that was one of the things i was thinking about i wanted to have my old passport because i have all the stamps i want to keep all the stamps right so you can they will send it back to you so you'll have it all right nika you have to have a hotel and a flight book to get uh, the china visa oh wow so you have to have everything booked already okay i didn't even know about like china i don't know much about china uh, but i'm learning i'm learning a lot right now let's see yes there's a box you check on your application to get more pages okay somebody saying that uh, you can get a 50 page passport they no longer let you add pages after that fact okay i think 50 pages will be enough for uh for 10 years but yeah all right so you guys have been great um i just wanted to get on here and i just wanted to actually talk just a little bit uh, i'm just going to try to keep it under an hour but uh, you guys have a lot of questions and you guys have a lot of a lot of knowledge and like i said i don't know i know maybe 40 percent of what i need to know when it comes to travel i'm still learning every day but my main thing is i want to use those points to get out and travel as long as i'm doing that and i'm not wasting points on on certain things then i feel that i'm doing the right thing uh, but overall chase sapphire preferred if you are just starting out and your your credits you know decent 700 720 somewhere around there uh, even the high sixes i think it, you'll still be good uh, I would I would look into getting that card because uh, you'll you'll get into that chase ecosystem and you'll start figuring out how you can use transfer points and all that stuff. And then that will probably prompt you to get a couple of more cards. Uh, and uh, when it comes to I guess we could talk about the 524 rule when it comes to chase, they have this unwritten rule rule the 524. So basically, if you have five credit cards and it doesn't have to be just um it doesn't have to be just chase cards it can be all the different credit cards because what they do is they look at your credit pools so if you have more than five accounts open uh, within two years they will automatically decline the sixth so uh, it's in your best interest to start out with getting chase cards and because they have that 524 rule so let's say you get five chase cards and then you want to get an American Express card, you might still be able to qualify for the American Express card because they don't have that 524 rule. But let's say you do it the other way and you get five American Express cards or three American Express cards and two city uh, city bank cards, and then you try to get a Chase card, well, Chase will pull that 524 rule on you and you won't be able to get that card. So it's in your best interest to go with... Uh, Go with Chase first, and that's just that's just the way I would do it. Go with Chase first, and I'm in a good situation because I have most of the Chase cards that I want. I will get the United card uh, because I, I I like flying United, so I'm going to get that card. I don't have a, a airline credit card with with United, so. But as far as all the other cards, I have pretty much the Chase cards that I want, and I have the Chase Sapphire preferred. I'm just going to downgrade that card to get the Chase Freedom. And so I have the cards that I need when it comes to the Chase ecosystem. Now I can branch off and just get all these other cards if I want to do that. Uh, but I'm pretty, like I said, I'm pretty conservative when it comes to cards, so I don't get a bunch. I'll just get what I need at that time. So uh, that's just my take on that. All right, let's look at the last few questions here, and then we will go for the night. Let's see. Nika, uh, near the consulate, 70. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas to you guys, too. Um, I have two pages left in my passport. So, Nika, you travel a lot. That's good. <laughs> uh, let's see. If you aren't training, you don't have to worry. The 524 rule. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's the reason they have it, because of people churning their cards. But some people like to have more than just five cards. And they like to get them right away and that that is one thing too that you have to think about like i got my cards over time i wasn't in a rush to get a bunch of cards 
the main reason is I didn't know what I was doing when I got my first couple of cards. So it, it took me a while to kind of figure out how to transfer points and what's the best value and all that. So uh, some people might have that information they might know already or they have friends that are already doing it and they kind of walk them through the steps. And so they want to get a bunch of cards all up front. So that that is, you know, that that's that's still there as well. So uh, let's see, Nika, they messed up my plans, adding the high K524 rule. Yeah, um, the world of Hyatt card, the new one. So, Nika, do you have that card or do you want to get that card? Yeah, so it, it, they do, yeah, they'll, they'll add different cards. I, I mean, huh. How would I look at that? Like, there's different ways to work out, work that, or work around that. Uh, if you do get business cards, if you have like a business, uh, you can get business cards. They don't pull. It's it's not. It's it doesn't meet that 524 rule. So that I do have a couple cards that are business cards, and I use those. As far as as far as okay, so as far as the high, so Nika's saying she wants the high. Um. There's, uh, how can I say it? There's two ways I look at this. Like you can, you can still have the chase cards that you have and just transfer to Hyatt, but you're not going to get all the extra little benefits like the free night and all that. But, um, it's not imperative that you have a Hyatt card. Uh, I guess, I guess that's what I'm saying. They're good cards, but it's not like a deal breaker if you don't have them. And if you have the points on the in the ultimate rewards program you can still you can still you stay there for free, get free nights there or you can do the the points plus cash which they've changed that a little bit which really irritates me uh, because now it's like there's a certain amount of points that you use and then it's half the price of it's 50 percent off the the price of the the hotel stay so if the hotel's 200 dollars a night to stay there you pay 100 and then you use some of your points well, in the old days, they had, and this was recent, like earlier this year, you spend, you knew exactly what you were spending. So if I were, if I was going to use 6,000 points, I knew I was going to use 6,000 points in like $75 or something like that. That's what it came down to. So the points plus cash option. And I love that option. I, I used it all the time. Uh, but, and I would do it like this. So I would stay at a hotel and let's say it's points plus cash. I would use my points and my buddy would pay cash and I'd just use that cash to pay for the for the the room. So I was wasn't paying anything out of my pocket. I was just using my points and he was paying for the cuz it usually was it usually was kind of like 50-50 the way it worked out. So now they've changed a little bit, but yeah, if you want all the benefits of the card, the World of High card, then you're probably going to have to you're going to have to get that card. But uh yeah, that's just my take on it. All right, I'm going to go, guys, because it's getting really, really late. But uh, I want to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year. Uh, every I want to do every Sunday, and that's kind of the way I want to do it, even though it's Monday today. But every Sunday, I'm going to try to jump on here at least once a week and just talk about a different card. And then we can just have, you know, talk about uh, our experiences and stuff like that. So um, if you guys do like this video, please give it a like and that will help the algorithms push it up so people, more people will see it and they'll see that I'm doing more live streams uh, and maybe they can join us. Because when, I, when it comes down to these cards, these travel award cards and all this stuff, there's so many different angles that you can use and so many different benefits uh, that you might not know. And there are a lot that I don't know and that I don't use on a regular basis, but there are a lot of different ways to maximize those points and so with everybody in here the more the merrier because then we all have our different our different takes on the whole situation and our different uh, things that we use our points for and our different stories that we can share um, and all that and it just helps it helps everyone and so that's what I'm all about all right so I will talk to you guys later uh, thanks for stopping by